Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Okay, so today we will continue our uh, next lecture. Okay, on the uh, pneumatic and hydraulic actuator system. Okay, part three. Okay. Okay, so uh, for today class, uh, we will cover these two sections. Okay which is the first one on the pressure control valve okay, you have learned on the directional control valve previously and some of the important symbols uh, and also uh, the cylinder okay, on the how we can model the circuit of the pneumatic and hydraulic actuator system okay, uh, using uh, the cylinder sequencing okay, is quite important is a involve a uh, skirting. Uh, I mean the circuit of how you can uh, model this boss for the boss actuator. Okay, so uh, for the first one is uh, for the pressure control valve. Basically, there are three types. Okay, uh, of the valve. Okay, the first one is the pressure regulating valve. Okay, so uh, for this valve. Okay, this is the real picture of this uh, pressure regulating valve okay and the function of this valve is basically to control the operating pressure okay in a circuit and to maintain it as a constant value okay so basically i think most of you have uh, involved or at least uh, have uh, experience see this type of valve okay so this is the the graphical one okay where we have the inlet gauge, okay, uh, inlet gauge, okay, and out the outlet one, okay, so same this one, we have two, okay, so when the, <coughs> we supply the air, okay, uh, then we can control uh, at what, uh, Pascal, the level of uh, pressure, and then the poppets uh, valve will open, and then the pressure will go through in this uh, outlet, uh, okay, so they have a pressure adjustment handle like this okay to control the diaphragm okay the level of the air okay inside uh, the tank okay from the tank to the outlet so the, by have a these two gauge we can control the inlet and also the outlet okay okay so uh, this is the some of the reference for you to see in and to read on the pressure regulator valve okay Okay, so the next one is on the pressure control valve. Okay, this is the example of the real uh, pressure uh, pressure limiting valve. Okay, sorry. So for the pressure limiting valve, okay, the function is uh, as a safety relief valve. Okay, as shown previously in the slide on the overall architecture of the uh, pneumatic and hydraulic system. They both have a pressure relief valve. Okay, so when there's a certain value of safety that been reached, so the valve will play its uh, roles. Lah, okay, so it will release the the residue or the over over value of uh, pressure. Uh, either is for the atmosphere for the pneumatic. Okay. And also for the hydraulics, uh, we release into the oil sum. Okay, so this is basically used as a safety device to limit the pressure in the circuit to below uh, at the below say uh, below of the safe value. Lah, okay, so there will be a uh, some uh, safe value. So this pressure to make sure that there is not exceeding that value. Lah, okay, so this is the symbol basically you can see here. Okay, it have the inlet here. Okay, when it activated, so it can be connected to this arrow and we release the pressure here. Lah. Okay, okay, this is controlled by the spring. Okay, so uh, basically this uh the valve is on the orifice. Okay, and see which is normally closed. Lah. Okay, where in the emergency case or there's a safety condition, so it will release and the air will be uh, uh going up to the vent. Lah. Okay while uh, there is a sufficient force and then the spring will exit okay and it will release the air okay so we uh, there are some animation here okay this is before the activation okay and this one is the after activation you can see when the orifice buff uh, 
is uh, accepted by the spring and then it's released to the atmosphere okay okay the next one is a uh, quite important okay which is on the pressure second valve okay so basically the if you see the symbol is quite similar to the uh, pressure limited uh, limiting valve okay but it have a different function lah, okay okay so basically for the pressure second valve it used to sense pressure of an external line okay okay from the outside okay uh, which is this lah, the external line and give the signal when it reach some of present value lah, okay it's most likely to the like a limiting valve okay but it's uh, used to arrange in sequence lah, okay okay for example we have this uh, automatic machine eh, for example so this is a 4 over 3 valve okay uh, what you have learned before the first one is on the ports okay the, the numbers of port okay we have one two three and four ports eh? so same goes when after the activation one two three four okay and this is a three position valve eh? we have one position one position two and position three okay so how is function so basically when the uh, this four over three solenoid will will be operate first okay and then after it engage okay so you can see the pressure supply is uh, not connected here when it engage to this uh, position okay so there will be a connection here okay and the pressure will be sent uh, to this uh, this uh, line lah, okay so it's going to the cylinder one okay so basically when the pressure is going to here and it will push the piston lah, okay the piston towards this uh, this end okay so after that okay so basically uh, this this sequence uh, uh, valve is not operate yet lah, okay because uh, there's no not necessary yet okay because at this level the pressure is low and it's not not reaching the end side yet okay so after it uh, the piston move at the end it's touch and then it, the pressure will be increased okay so when the pressure will be increased inside the cylinder okay this will some of release of air to the vent okay here the symbol is come come here and then we can release and also this uh, pressure sequence valve will be activated lah, okay uh, then the, the the pressure will be sent also to here okay okay and then it's uh, the spring will here and it will go through this uh, valve and go to the cylinder two and move this piston also okay so that's why there's a namely a sequence okay it go to the cylinder one first okay after achieve some of the amounts okay it will release through the cylinder number two okay okay so okay so the next one is on the cylinder okay so basically uh they have we have a hydraulic and pneumatic cylinder okay so basically the function is almost the same lah, okay basically for the hydraulic and pneumatic cylinder but uh, they are different in size lah, which means that for the higher load for example you may need a higher uh, actuator cylinder and we can use the hydraulic lah. but for the small uh, or the fast reaction one we can use a, a pneumatic okay so both are as a linear actuator okay where we can control the movement lah. i mean that's how many pressure we give we can expect the the displacement or the movement of the uh, this uh, piston okay so for the there's uh, some kind of the non-linear actuator like a piezoelectric actuator that's one is a non-linearity uh, because uh, when we give uh, some of the voltage to generate the actuator uh, is the output the, the, the displacement or the movement of the actuator is not uh, as what we expected so what we want uh, we will not get the the result is something that we consider as not linear lah. so we have to do some of the correction to make sure that uh, the actuator become linearized okay but for the hydraulic and pneumatic is basically considered as a linear actuator lah, okay so uh, the cylinder consists of the cylinder tube here okay okay this is cylindrical tube 
along which a piston or ram can which is can slide lah okay go inside and go outside okay okay so basically for the cylinder there are two basic types okay which is on the single acting and also the double acting okay so for the single acting okay you can see here the single acting cylinder is basically control pressure that applied to a one side of the piston only okay so we can see here okay the the piston can only move uh, the, the the pressure can only be supplied at here and then we can move outside and inside like that and there's no no two way supply uh, pressure okay so there's a basically for the single and double acting the 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 design is almost similar but uh, for the double acting there are no spring elements uh, to control the movement of piston both of the the movement of piston is controlled by the air at the both side but for this one you can see here okay this is the symbol okay we can use uh add one but i think the upper one is more clearer lah, okay because we can see the piston and the shaft and so the spring here okay so there's only one intake here okay so when we supply the air pressure here okay and then it, it will move the spring uh, it will move the piston okay and the spring is react at the opposite uh, direction lah, which means that uh, it will have uh, the function is to return back the piston at the this uh, original position lah. okay after the piston is moved okay and then of course the piston rod will will move together lah. we will going outside here and then after they relieve the the residue uh, pressure air to the atmosphere and then the spring will return back to the original position this is just a very simple uh, mechanical uh, function uh, cylinder lah, okay basically okay so for this one uh, as a basic okay we have a, a equation of uh, force okay, equal to uh, pressure and multiply by the uh, cross section area lah, okay later on i will explain more on the how you can calculate the the force okay this is the equation that you already learned in uh, previous subject okay it's in your second and third year uh, first and second here, which is involved in fluid mechanics and uh, fluid dynamics so i think most of you have already familiar with this equation okay or as maybe i can show you okay just to uh, refresh back okay so basically we have the equation of f okay equal to pressure multiplied by a okay which is the area okay Okay, so we have the area. Basically, is cylindrical. You have a area of the circle, which is uh, pi uh, r. Okay, uh, pi b. Sorry, is uh, divided by two. Okay. Okay, so you can use this uh, uh, equation. Okay, uh, for the uh, calculation okay basically yeah. okay so uh, we have here okay on the single acting okay so this is how it's function okay this is uh, the case when there's no current and this is the current applied which is not activated and this is the activated one okay so we can previously i already show you on the uh, symbol okay of the symbol for the pressure source okay uh, which is at this point okay uh, previously we know as a 1p eh, like this but in the symbol one you can draw like this eh, okay this is a pressure supply okay also for this one is considered a 3 over 2 where we have a 3 port okay 1 for the pressure inlet for the outlet here okay and then for the exhaust release eh, which is symbol of exhaust we consider the 3r okay so this is when when the current is supplied okay you can see that uh this one okay is uh, currently is not activated the symbol is t like this sorry and then after the current uh, has been applied so it's moved from this to here lah. okay you can see okay the 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 pressure now is connected and there's an arrow symbol eh? okay arrow symbol here which means there is a flow ah, okay the flow supply to this cylinder 
you can see from this position when there's a pressure supply and then it moves lah from here to here okay so then uh, after that when uh, it's going back to the original position it's going back to here lah okay it's going back to here and then it's release the 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 air to the atmosphere lah there's an exhaust symbol here okay so this is 3 over 2 mean that there are 3 pots and 2 uh, position okay for the single active cylinder okay for the double acting cylinder okay you have a uh, to control pressure is applied each side of the piston mean that there's no spring element okay the movement of the piston is directly controlled by air okay in both direction okay this is the symbol okay you can see there's one and two pots here okay so as you can see almost the same one but there's no spring eh? no spring here but all the components are the component is almost the same like a single I think okay so different pressure between both sides will resulting piston movement eh? okay okay we can see after this in more detail so the piston can be moved in both direction lah, okay to the right and to the left okay which the the different of the air pressure okay Okay, so for the control of double acting cylinder, you can see here we have a 5 over 2 valve, which means that they have 5 uh, pots and 2 uh, position. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so when the case where there is no activation, okay, uh, it have a, a okay, no, no, no activation, the pressure is not uh, connected yet. Okay, okay. The, and then after it activated, okay, you can see the pressure is connected here, okay, to the air, uh, to the flow, okay, flow of the pressure towards inside the uh, cylinder, okay, you can see this uh, piston from here, it moves to here, eh? okay, so that there's a high pressure here and low pressure here, so that's that's why the uh, is connected uh, is a move the piston and the roads like this eh? okay so when this condition of go back to the deactivated the de uh, de uh, non-activated so uh, the is come to back to this position okay and then the air will be released okay okay the air will be released here and this move back to here lah. so basically uh this is uh how it works uh, basically eh? when there's a pressure intake it moves okay and there's a release of air to the band okay when this de deactivated this play a role back uh, to to move uh, at this side back okay the original position okay so this is how the double acting cylinder red okay uh based on the uh different of air pressure only there's no spring element okay so for the selection of actuator actually this is based on these two factors lah, okay the first one is of the force to move the load okay mean that if the, your system require a higher force to move the load okay you should consider hydraulic lah, okay when uh, you are not considered in terms of high force but in terms of speed you want to make the your actuator move faster you can select a pneumatic okay okay so okay so uh, as previously shown this is how we can uh, calculate okay uh, this uh, 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 force uh, okay so basically okay uh, okay as shown before we have a, a force that produced by a cylinder okay uh, is is equal to the cross section area lah okay means that you have a uh, a lah okay this is the a okay okay the cross section area of the cylinder okay you have the cylinder okay so this is the cross section lah okay we consider this only as per this equation lah okay it's a pi okay diameter over 2 yeah, divided by 2 okay when uh, we have a root of 2 here then the bigger part become 4 and then the upper part is uh, multiplied by 2 okay 
So a pneumatic cylinder uh, with a working pressure of 500 kPa. Okay, we have here 500 kPa. Okay, this one. Okay, and then you convert to the SI unit is multiplied by 10 uh, power of 3. Lah, okay, to become a Pascal. Okay, so you multiply by having a diameter cylinder having a diameter of 50 mm. Okay, you convert to the unit of meter 50 0 0.05 meter okay so you have this equation you just directly multiply it's a very simple mathematics and you will get for this uh, as, uh, pneumatic one uh, which is 9, 981.7 newton lah, that is required for the force to move the uh, cylinder okay but for the same dimension here okay you can use the same dimension here of the hydraulic cylinder but working pressure is uh, 15,000 okay okay 15,000 uh, kPa how much the force required so you just replace this part from uh, 500 kPa to 15,000 uh, kPa and you will get the answer lah okay because you are maintaining this part okay okay so the next one is on the calculation of the velocity yeah, okay okay this is uh, for the hydraulic uh, actuator only okay if the flow rate of hydraulic liquid into a cylinder is q okay q the unit is uh, uh, meter cube per second lah, okay so if the flow rate of the hydraulic liquid into a cylinder is q is uh, meter uh, meter cube per second then the volume swept up by piston is in one second is Q lah, Q meter Q. Okay, so we can uh, use this uh, equation Q equal to A multiplied V. Okay, so A is a cross section area of the piston. Okay, the same one you can use this equation, and V is the speed of the hydraulic cylinder V. Okay. So basically, when you have this, you can uh, calculate the flow rate. Lah, okay, the flow rate will be in terms of this unit. Lah, okay, Q meter cube per, uh, per second. Okay, with the same dimension here. Okay, we can use the same same value of uh, uh, this dimension of area. And Q is given by 7.5 multiplied by 10 power of minus 3 meter cube per second. Okay, so you can replace the Q value here and the A value already calculated before this and the velocity you will get 3.8 uh, meter per second. Lah. Okay, so for this value you will get 3.8 meter per second. So basically you can try to confirm the calculation. Okay, it's just a simple mathematic. You just insert the value and then you can get it. Okay. So basically, uh, for this uh, equation, the okay, concept is not applicable for the pneumatic actuator since its speed depends on the air that can be vented. Okay, because it's a uh, open, eh? uh, it's a user air, so it's quite uh, difficult unless we can confirm this uh, speed. Okay, uh, as the air, more air that can be vented. Okay, so a valve need to regulate the speed, lah, Okay, because it's very inconsistent. Uh, so if we need, uh, have a regulate valve that can control the the air and then we can do the same calculation lah, but for the hydraulic is possible okay okay so the next one is another example here okay okay so a hydraulic cylinder is uh, is to be used okay to move a workpiece in a manufacturing operation through a distance of uh, 200 okay maybe I can this okay so we have a distance d equal to 250 mm okay at time equal to uh, 15 seconds eh? okay so if the force of 50 kilo newton okay is required to move the workpiece what is the required working pressure okay this one to find working pressure and the hydraulic uh, fluid flow rate eh, q okay 
if the cylinder of the piston diameter is 150 okay diameter is uh, this is the the distance and the diameter is 150 mm okay okay so basically you have two equation lah the, the force equal to here and then the another one is uh, uh, the q lah q okay equal to a b okay so from this you can calculate lah okay basically uh, okay you have the a okay uh, the pi d equal to okay you already have the diameter here is given okay and then the force is also given here okay so you can find the pressure okay for the q1 uh, you already given the a you already have the a okay and then the uh, the velocity you can calculate this one okay because velocity is the unit is uh, meter per seconds and then you can just divide this one lah, okay and then you can get the q okay and just a very simple one okay so let's see the, the answer okay so for the solution uh, you have a the cross section area here okay of the piston a pi okay 0 0.15 here meter divided by 4 okay you get the a yeah? and then uh, the force produced by cylinder is 50 kN therefore the working pressure p f divided by a here okay you have a force of uh, 50 kN divided by a you can get 2.825 mega pascal eh? okay then for the velocity okay as shown before you divide the 0 0.25 by 15 you get 0 0.01667 meter per second and then you just multiply lah, okay so you get the answer in terms of meter cube per second okay it's quite straightforward okay 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 now we're going to the next uh, subsection okay which is a cylinder sequencing okay okay for this one okay so uh it's quite important uh, and uh, maybe you need to review till more times to get a uh, fully understand how it works on the cylinder sequencing okay so many control system employ pneumatic okay or hydraulic cylinder as a actuating elements uh, and it's require a sequence for of extension and retraction of the cylinder to occur, occur. so this one i can give you example of uh, how we can make it okay okay let's say you have a two system of the cylinder lah, okay the cylinder 1a and cylinder b eh? okay so basically you want to move the cylinder the first step uh, extend okay and then this one is we consider as a plus and then you want to the next step is you want to move the cylinder B extend okay and then after that you want to move back the cylinder uh, you want to re uh, retract it okay as a, a minus and retract the cylinder B as a B minus to the uh, original position and then uh, uh, you may need also to make it a, as a continuous so it can uh, it's not stop here it then it going back to a plus b plus a minus b minus so that's that the, the thing of how the cylinder sequencing lah okay in discussion of sequential control with cylinder it is com common practice to give each cylinder a reference letter of a b c d lah but this one we consider as two cylinder a and b uh, but let's say your system has a four cylinder you can name it as a a b c d lah. that's a more complicated system and to indicate the state of each cylinder by using the a uh, plus for the extent okay a plus is mean it's move here okay and minus to retract okay so let's see this uh, example okay so we have this system eh? okay okay please uh, focus on this one okay so the cylinder a and cylinder b okay we want to has a 
uh, movement of a plus and a minus uh. okay a plus is we move outside and a minus if we move back inside okay also the cylinder b b plus outside and b minus going back inside okay extend and retract okay so now we have a circuit okay the overall circuit here we have a uh, the total of seven valve eh? one two okay three four five six seven okay so how we uh, want to operate this one okay so uh this also the 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 initiate or the switch eh? the limit switch of b plus b minus a plus and a minus okay after this we can see after the cylinder a is moved as a plus and they will vent as a a minus two to uh, bend the uh, a air okay okay so uh, okay for the first step okay okay you can see here this currently is uh, not connected eh? the the pressure is not uh, it's not working and it's not not connected yet okay for the next slide you can see when we push the button and then we have connect the uh, pressure inlet okay this is flow here okay towards this uh, b minus the initiate uh, limit switch okay okay and then it's going to this uh, valve number three yeah okay from valve number one to valve number two and currently valve number three but it not go cannot go through because uh, it's not connected yet okay and then for the next slide you can see the valve moves here move here there's uh, the pressure is connected now it can move to the cylinder a and can extend the 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 piston and the rods eh? okay on the next slide okay you can see okay where the piston is moved okay where the pressure is going inside and it's uh, release the uh, is uh, move the uh, uh, the as a, a plus lah, okay as a highlight here in the blue color as a, a plus and then for the previously a minus here it uh, releasing the this uh, the limit switch lah, is activated lah, okay okay so this is the condition of the a plus complete for the next one is for the b plus okay Okay, so for the B plus, this uh, number 5, okay, the valve number 5 is currently activated, okay, previously it's not, not connected, yeah, the, the, the pressure is not connected here, but the next slide you can see here, it's connected, okay, it's go through here, okay, and then the valve number 6 is uh, currently not connected, okay, but on the next slide, you can see it's connected here, lah. Okay, so the, the, the pressure can be uh, continue to flow here and it will go inside the cylinder B. And then when the pressure is supplied here, so it will move the, this as a B plus. Lah. Okay, you can see here. And now it move. Okay, okay, it move. So now currently both of them is extended condition. Lah. Okay, as I like here, B plus is currently move. It's a stage of B plus. Lah. Okay, the next one we want to move back the A minus and B minus uh, to become at a retract position back. Okay. Okay. When you can see when there's a B plus and then it's a release of the limit switch out at the B minus here. Lah, okay. You can always refer back to the first slide where the label of A plus B plus uh, and uh, B, uh, A plus B plus uh, B plus. Uh, a minus and B minus, okay. Okay, so for the next one, okay, so the the air, uh, pressure air, previously is not connected for the A minus. Now it's current, uh, it currently is connected, eh? okay, it's connected here. It move supply to this uh, uh, valve number three, okay. Okay, so now it's connected here and eh? And then it can supply to this uh, area to this uh, uh, as a, a minus, and it can move the cylinder back to it can retract back. Okay, 
uh, move into the original condition back lah okay okay uh, okay now it move lah okay the air pressure inside move and then you can see uh, it release uh, as a A plus lah uh, limit switch here okay 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 the last one we want to move back the cylinder as a B minus okay previously it's not connected here and now it's connected lah okay it move the pressure okay to this part okay okay it's connected and then it can release the pressure inside this area lah. and it can move the limit switch to the B minus okay okay so now the system is complete lah B minus and then release a limit switch as a B plus here. Okay, so this is condition of B minus. Okay, so I think it's quite difficult for you to understand at the first time. Maybe you can try to go back and try to hear back the video and try to get your slide ready and try to understand properly lah. Okay, but basically that's the, the, the movement that required. Okay, okay, so. The cycle can be started again by push the start button again lah. Let's say we want to move A plus, B plus, A, mi uh, A minus and B minus. Okay. But that's the case that we want to system to run continuously lah. Okay. For if the system want to run continuously, the last movement of B minus for example would have to trigger the first movement lah so that it can uh, which connect to which each other. Okay, and then the system can be run continuously. Okay, so this is an alternative way of uh, realizing the above sequence. Okay, involve the air supply being switched on and off uh, to valve in groups. Okay, this one is separate. Okay, there is no no group, but this one is in group and is a term of cascade control lah, where we can uh, have a in term of cascade control. Okay, by uh, grouping. Okay, the the buff ah. Okay, okay. Let's say okay. We go back to the. This is more on the pneumatic one. Okay, we have a group A. Okay, at the upper side here. Okay, and group B at the lower side ah. Okay, just uh, be focused on this one where we want to move A plus. Okay, the the sim the similar one we can A plus we want to extend A minus we want to uh, retract back. Okay. The same one, B plus, S10, B minus, retract back. Lah, okay. Just focus on the, this highlight and remember the position of uh, this uh, limit switch of A plus, B minus, B plus and A minus. Okay. So, now uh, we want to start the animation. Okay. We push the start button here. Currently, it's not connected. Eh? You can see here. Okay. Okay. Now, it's connected. Okay. Is connected here, and then the pressure is supplied to this valve. Okay, okay, and then we when it's connected here, okay, the pressure is continue to flow inside the cylinder A. Yeah. Then it can move as a, a plus. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I highlight here as a, a plus is move extended already. Okay, so the next one. We want to move the B plus ah, to make it uh, as, as extended as like A plus. Okay. Okay. Before this is not connected. Okay. And now it's connected lah. Okay. So for the previously when the A plus is uh, extended, there is a there is a limit the release of the limit switch of the A minus here lah. Okay. So now we can see is this one is connected. Okay. At the same uh, column here okay the same line here okay it's going here and then transfer to this buff okay currently it's not connected okay for the next slide okay now it's connected here and then the the pressure can be flow uh, continue flow inside the this cylinder b plus okay and then we can expect it move as a b plus uh, after this okay okay now it move both condition is extended uh, okay so uh, again, when the B, B plus is extended, so the B minus here will be released. Eh? Okay. Okay. So for the next one, we focus on the group number two. Okay. Okay. When now, uh, it have uh, 
going to after finishing is going to this bar that is connected to the below part lah. Okay, currently it's not connected, and when we activated it here, okay, and then the flow can go through lah. Okay, the flow can go through. Here is still not connected. And then for the next slide, we can see it can go through lah. The the pressure is on. Okay, and then the pressure can go continue to this line lah, group B. Okay, you can see that at this group B, it will go through both sides. Eh? At the right side, here, it's still not connected. And also the uh, left side here. This one to make sure both can be retract back lah, to at the original position. Okay, we, when we can switch on this one. Okay, okay now it's switch on. Okay, it can move towards this and then it can move back to it will be minus eh, after this okay uh, now it's move here okay so at the same time it's going to here okay previously it's not connected okay but after uh, the b, b minus have the move okay now here point is still is, is connected lah, okay it's going to the this this uh, airflow uh, directions okay and then currently not connected eh? After this, okay, we move here. Now it's connected, and then it can go through uh, to this uh, position. Lah, okay, currently it's at this position. Okay, not not extended. And then at the next slide, you can see after the airflow is going inside, it's go back to the re, uh, original position, lah, which is retract and retract. Okay, from the extended it going back to uh, retract position okay so uh, it's quite confusing basically but but uh, try to understand and try to go one by one of the slide and i'm sure if you uh, refer to this video and go back to your slide and listen it carefully and slowly i think you can get it lah, okay so basically that's uh, for the two-day class okay uh, thank you very much and we will meet again after for the next lecture. Okay.